and some bank. Underway from Cookville, Tennessee, second semifinal matchup. It's the two and three seed. Two teams that met each other in the regular season finale in late October. Yeah, we have a really interesting game coming up. Uh, they they um, played just a couple weeks ago. Wow, already a shot by the Cougars. Hits the crossbar. Less than a minute in, here's a second shot that's off the top of the net. What a start for SAUE. Here's the first one. And then a moment later, from long distance, from about 22 yards out, hit the very top of the net. And, and we talked that about, uh, when we were talking about the keys of the game, when SIUE leads at half, they're 5-1-1 one one this season, but then if they trail at half, they're 0-4, and, and when they're tied at half, they're 1-0-3. So they for sure want to come out strong like they just did and score first. You know, they know they when they score first, they know how to secure the game. And for Moorhead, it's completely opposite. Make sure they don't score first. Moorhead is a team that loves possessing the ball, and that's what they're going to try to do right now. We see them right now for in the formation that they have. They're going to play it short. They're going to see what SIUE is doing and then build from there. But there's not Moorhead is not a team that is just going to boot the ball up. They're going to try to possess, possess, possess the whole game. That shot for SAUE was Taylor Dolt, the junior out of Lawson, Missouri. She did score a goal in the regular season finale against Moorhead State in what turned out to be a 3-0 victory for the Cougars. So kind of what we talked about in the first meeting today between Tennessee Tech and Lindenwood, SIUE has had essentially two weeks off. So that can be both a good thing and a bad thing. Good thing to rest and regroup a little bit. Bad thing because you got to shake the rust off. Yeah, and the good thing about it is uh, basically the last game that they played, it was against Morhen and they won 3-0. So they have that that memory in their minds, obviously, and they just have to try to do the same that they did last time. They they score from three free kicks, uh, mm -hmm. uh, three set pieces. So... You know, obviously Moorhead has to be really careful with the set pieces because SIU is really strong on that. 12 days since the last time SIUE played. This is their sixth consecutive OVC tournament appearance. Their ninth since joining the OVC. They have won the tournament back-to-back -back seasons. They have won it four total times. And we see right now this is going to be happening the whole game. In the middle, they are 3v3 because they are both playing a 4-3-3. So SIU is not going to let Moorhead connect with their midfielders because they know Moorhead midfielders are really good. So what Moorhead is going to try to do is skip their midfielder and connect with their forward, which is really good, who is really good at holding the ball. So that's going to be a really key, a really big key of the game. Is SIUE going to allow that? Is SIUE going to be able to deal with that long ball to, to side run or, or are they... Or are they going to be able to bypass them with possession? Really for the first time, Moorhead State trying to do some damage. Here comes the cross. Room in the box, but just out of the reach of the freshman. Shayla Podzik from Pennsylvania. So close to putting one in. She does have one goal this season. And we see it again. She's on the second post and SIU is going to have to deal with her coming in strong in the second post the whole game. Uh, Morher is a team that brings a lot of players high. We're going to see the, both of their fullbacks coming up and crossing balls like we just did. And, you know, SIUE knows that. So they just have to be able to put those chances away. Morehead State, first semifinals appearance since 2015. Eagles were picked preseason six in the conference by the coaches and the media. They earn a three seed. So if, she, if we see right now, um, SIU has one forward pressure in two center backs. So Moorhead State center backs have a lot of time in the ball to connect. Here's 
How different do you think both of these teams will play each other since they just met 12 days ago? Um, so far, it seems like they are both trying kind of like a similar thing. Uh, I I was trying to see if SIU will change their press a little, but so far they've been pressuring with one forward to, you know, the both of uh, Moorhead center backs. And, you know, it worked for them. So I don't think I would change them either. Now, Moorhead is the one that has to be a little bit more careful defensively than they were in the last meeting. SIUE has won the last five meetings between these two schools, outscoring Moorhead State 17 to one during that stretch. And we see right now, um, Moorhead's center backs are gonna be really high on the field. We see right now Landin uh, throwing in the ball. She's gonna go really high. They're not afraid of sending the players higher. In fact, she receives the ball right now. And that's a defender that is that high. That's why Moorhead has been so successful this season because they're a really big position team that is able to send a lot of players forward. Something to monitor for sure. It has definitely worked for the Eagles this season. We have scored 15 goals. That's the most in a season for Moorhead State since 2018. This is Dikema who tracks it down. Sophomore out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. First team OVC selection this year. Also the defensive player of the year. Really good pass to Haro. Try to find some room, create some space. Haro at the top of the box. Looked like she wanted to let one go and just missed it. And that was really good defending by uh, Landon. It was not her position, it was not her mark, but she track her all the way in. Here comes Moorhead State. That's Kehoe on defense for SIUE. Lights was trying to create some space out of touch. So win SIUE. And something interesting to watch, SIUE is leaving two forwards on top all the time, even when Moorhead is attacking, which forces Moorhead to leave three in the back. So they are not able to send that many players on top as we were talking about earlier. Physical play there, that's the junior Lily Schneiders, who we touched on up top, a foul on Schneiders and SIUE. This is the first foul of the night. And, and we see Sneeders, a forward, tracking back. When you come uh, from the back like that, it's usually going to be a foul because the referee feels like you don't have the advantage uh, on the body. This is Podzik right in the arms of Taylor Spiller. Junior goalkeeper out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Had five saves in the regular season against Moorhead State. OVC goalkeeper of the week twice this season. She is a team captain for the Cougars. And we see now SIUE doing completely something different that Moorhead is doing. SIUE not trying to play from the back, going more direct because they know they have the forwards, really fast forwards that they can just go and come at you like we just uh, we saw in the first minute of the game. So really two really different styles but have that have been successful for each of the teams during the regular season. Natalie Ledden searching for somebody to throw it into. A junior out of Stockholm, Sweden. Transfer from Carson Newman, Division II in the state of Tennessee. Another opportunity for Ledden at Tolson in. She's played in every game this season. Gets it into Podzik. Podzik looking for room to roam, and her pass is intercepted. And as we see right now, Moorhead plays really wide. So those passes have to be super hard because if not, SAU is going to be able to cut them as it just happened. So you have to pass the ball really fast if you don't want the other team to, to intercept it. Podzik falls down. That was Neidhart coming over defensively for the challenge and a foul, the second one on SIUE. Potsik, uh, we're gonna look at it. Potsik, really good at that, really good physical and technical player. 
She she doesn't allow the ball to get off her feet, which forces the other team to follow her constantly. And now let's see what they try in this free kick. This is the junior Sarah Falloon out of Michigan, 47th game of her career. Was banged up at the beginning of the season, now starting to get healthy and playing at high level for Moorhead State. Your Spiller on the move, scoops it up. So far the game as we expected, Moorhead having more possession, but SIUE having the most definite chances so far. Two early shots for the Cougars. One so far for Moorhead State. That one just out of the reach of the freshman, Ponzik. Ponzik and Haro get tangled up. Ledden sends one the other way to Redmond. Redmond elects to play it back around midfield to Anna Lohr, a sophomore out of Cincinnati. Made the game-winning PK in the victory against UT Martin. SIU with a really organized press. We have Sneeders forcing uh, Moorhead State for one side. We're, we're gonna see her now in the ball, making a big pass. The right idea, but the flag in the air, offsides on SIUE the first tonight. And, and we're gonna see now when Moorhead center backs have the ball, Schneiders in number seven for SIUE in the middle, she wants to force them what side. She wants to make it predictable so her teammates can know what side the ball is going. We see her right now forcing Moorhead to go to that side and then all the teammates, all her teammates compress Moorhead state. Ranging over, this is Spiller, tracks it down. And so far a really successful press for SIUE, not letting Moorhead do what they, they like. And, and and we said one of the keys for the game for Moorhead was reading that SIUE press and adapting to it. So far they haven't been able to adapt uh, because of how organized that SIUE press is. Um, they're making the game predictable. So now is whether the Moorhead State players are able to change, adapt, maybe play with their six and switch it really fast, play with their forward so she can hold it up. That was the first foul on Moorhead State. This is sent to the top of the box. And the Eagles get rid of it quickly. Head coach for SAUE, it's Derek Burton. 15th season overall. He's got over 100 wins on his resume. 10th tournament appearance. He's won the whole thing four times, including back to back. And we were able to talk to SAUE's coach and how they're trying to build that you know, that confidence in their players so they can be back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back champions. They want to be the team to beat in the OBC, and so far they are. That was the third foul on SIUE. Maria Haro, junior out of St. Louis. Almost a handball, let him, almost clipped her. It is out of touch, though when SIUE. There's Chris Fox, the head coach for Moorhead State. His first season was an assistant coach at High Point the last four seasons. And he spoke to us this week about all the work uh, it took for them to rebuild the team, all the work that it took for them to build this style of play that has been so successful this year. Yeah, he was a lot of fun to talk to for sure. He was fired up to be here in the tournament in the semifinals. First trip for the Eagles to make the semifinals is 2015. There's another foul on SAUE. All time in the tournament, SIUE leads in the tournament one to nil. That occurred back in 2018 in overtime. 
That's just in the postseason. Overall, SIUE leads the all-time series 10-3-1 over Moorhead State. Ledden on the set piece. Lofts one in the box. Here's the header. Spiller ranging over, and it's out of her reach and out of touch. Goal kick on the way for SAUE. Tournament Series history presented by Delta Dental. Unleash your smile power with Delta Dental. And the most dangerous chances for Morehead State have come for free kicks, and that's something that SIUE probably wants to to think about because they've been falling, especially pot sake, a lot close to their box. Yeah, and that's always going to be a fall. Uh, Sweet had her arms on on SIUE's player back, and that's always going to be a foul. We have had a lot of them so far. Six total in the first half. That's the second on Moorhead State. Sky towards the top of the box. There's Ledin on defense. Harrow coming over. This is Taylor Dolch. She had a shot about 10 seconds in, and it will be picked up by Aaron Gibbs, the freshman out of Mesa, Arizona. And Moorhead State is a is a setting that is playing really spread out, which is it can be kind of risky because if they give the ball away, then they have to close up really quickly because if not, you're leaving all all the central um, pathway, how we call it in soccer, close for the other team to just come at you and score. So. It has to be really hard to play a uh, style like that, and that's why Fox was talking to us. They had to do a lot of video sessions when he came, first came in in the spring. It was a lot of team building, culture building, and he had to convince his players that this was the right way to play. Yeah, it takes a total buy-in, and he has certainly been able to do that, building the culture at Moorhead State. More wins this season for Moorhead State than the previous two combined. That tells you that what kind of job Chris Fox and his staff has done. Here's Haro. She does have a goal in her career against Moorhead State. Finds Sneeders. Sneeders, first team OVC selection, plays it back to Emma Duco, one of the team captains for the Cougars. Monster collision in midfield. And that's another foul on Potsik again. And she's complaining because she's gotten fouled. This is the, f the third foul she receives this game. And she's kind of asking for something more for the ref, like a, like a yellow card. Let's one go. It's deflected off. Volmer still trying to stick with it. And the Cougars will send one in the corner out of touch. And this will be a goal kick. Yeah, Potsy got tremendous play so far. She's been the most dangerous player for Moorhead. Um, SIU is having a, a really hard time defending Hannah, and the, the only answer so far is to fall her. You can see she was still looking at the referee, like still pleading her case, looking for more than a foul called. By the way, the Cougars don't really have a lot of yellow cards, just nine in the regular season. Oro sends one in the corner, being pursued by Anna Lohr. Sneeders coming over. Sneeders sends one way out of touch. This will be a goal kick for Moorhead State. And sometimes that's kind of a psychological game that you're playing with the ref, trying to tell him, hey, watch out, because she's been following me the the last place. So for sure, um, Bomber is going to have to be really careful with that because the goal, the, the ref already has it on his back, on the back of his mind that she's been doing that the whole time so far. Don't make a mental note of it. Approaching the midway point of the first half, the winner of this match will take on top seed and regular season champ Tennessee Tech. Tennessee Tech won 5 to nil over Lindenwood. Scored two goals on PKs. There's another foul on SIU. And this is going to be a yellow card. And we were, we were just talking about it. SIU has been falling a lot. And, and this time, um, 
it's 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 a yellow card on uh, Magnoni, and I'm not surprised. And maybe she had to take it for her teammates. Um, they've been fouling a lot, and the ref made a mental note, as we just said. Their first yellow card of the season, the tenth overall for SAUE as a team. Really good turn by uh, Satron, by the way. Here we go, another set piece. This skips to the top of the box. Cougars prepared for that one. Let in raging over. A lot of room for her to work with. Uses the left foot, heading out. Redmond trying to get around. Christopher plays it back. Here's Sneeders. Can she get to it? Sneeders in Falloon. Hustle for it. Falloon with a very nice play for Moorhead State. And then she falls down. Yeah, really nice play by Falloon. And we were talking about it at the beginning of the broadcast, too, that that's what SIU is going to try to do, force uh, mistakes on, on Moorhead when they're trying to build from the back. And Sneeders is really good at that. We see her right now. She's approaching, approaching, and then she's going to get closer. Opportunity on the way here for SAUE. This is Taylor Dolt. Dolt in the box. She had a shot that hit the crossbar earlier. This time has it taken away. That's Magnoni that stumbled and out of touch. The win, more head state. And we saw it again. They force the error and they don't hesitate. Uh, when SIU gets the ball, they go forward really fast and forcing Moorhead State to bring all her their numbers back. That's the senior Abby Van Hoovy out of Lexington, Kentucky. 69th game of her career being played this evening. Sneeders again, trying to find Taylor Dolt. Dolt cannot quite catch up to it. Again, Moorhead State, that back line standing tall. This is Duco. Sends it over to Needhart. Needhart, OVC, newcomer selection, a transfer from Illinois State. A pass intercepted and kicked around midfield. More heads. Um, center backs have to be really careful with Sneeders. She likes receiving the ball with the back to goal. She likes holding it, but they cannot let her turn. RL, Skies one in the box. Does she earn a corner kick for SAUE? It's going to be close. It'll be a throw in for Moorhead State. This match started with fireworks for SAUE. Taylor Dolt had a shot 10 seconds in that hit the crossbar. We just saw a really nice play by Swift. Um, when we talked to uh, Coach uh, Fox, he told us that there was a player that wasn't going to come in, wasn't going to come back after the season last year, and she decided ultimately to come back after the spring. Yeah, one of the seniors on the roster that he sat down to visit with. That's a foul on Moorhead State. So a set piece for SIUE and the sophomore, Sydney Christopher out of Illinois. Second team OVC selection. She keeps it on the ground in the corner. Lofting in the air by Volmer. Ranging over and making the catch, it's Aaron Gibbs. Gibbs this season in split duties, only allowed six goals, has 44 saves. She had four in the regular season against SIUE. And Chris Fox told us he has never had a true freshman back in goal ever at any point in his career, and that shows you the confidence that he has in Gibbs. Yeah, and she, she didn't start at the beginning of the season, but she had to come in and 
and she did an amazing job so they keep trusting her and it was worth it because she was able to save a PK against UT Martin that ultimately led them to win uh, that quarterfinal matchup. Yeah, Moorhead State made four PKs, UT Martin three, so she was a difference maker. And now we see how Moorhead State has kind of figured out that press. Um, they don't want to make it predictable like SIU was trying to do. So by playing back to gifts, they were able to get around that SIU is press. And now let's see how SIU adapts again to that, knowing that they are going to just go back to gifts and rotate it like that. This is the chess match, right? Just two teams that met each other just 12 days ago. Yeah, and soccer is a lot like chess in, in a lot of ways. Um, more than anything, you have to see what the other team in front of you is doing and then adapt to it and, and make them change their strategy. Another foul, that's on the junior, Courtney Vollmer. And Vollmer has a, uh, a couple of fouls already, um, some in Potsig, and now we just saw her fall swift uh, again, and she hasn't got got in that yellow card that Potsig, Potsig was asking the coach about, the ref about. Natalie Ledden will handle this. She's played in every single match this season. She plays a lot. She's played every single second three times this season. It was a good ball in the box, headed out. Look at the speed by Nicole Fiantaco. That's one thing Chris Fox, he did say she is without a doubt the fastest player in the OVC and she displayed it there for a second. Here comes SAUE, this is Dolt. Dolt, the cross with the left foot hits the side of the net. Yeah, and that, make it, that makes her a really hard player to defend and obviously, you know, it, it makes uh, a player like Van Hoobie being hesitant on going up the field because she could get, um, you know, she has to cover that space. And a foul in midfield. And what has been a very physical first half, that is now 10 total fouls. That is on the player that we highlighted in the open, the junior Hadley Citrone out of Missouri, OVC newcomer selection, transfer from Tennessee and St. Louis. Here's a long distance shot by Schneider. Skies one way over the goal. She has a really good, powerful shot, and that's why their coaches probably encourage her to just keep shooting like that. And we see again, as we mentioned, going back to Gibbs, maybe figuring that out to rotate. And now we see how SAUE has adapted to that. Yeah, they're definitely putting pressure. That's Haro bearing down on top of the goalkeeper Gibbs a moment ago. Ledden trying to play it forward. She does. Finds Citrone. Citrone plays it back. Eagles with a lot of room to work here. Really good pass. Picked up by Spiller. And that's why this Moorhead State team is so good. We just talked about SIU adapting their press. They brought a lot of players forward. They were pressing really high, but they were able to get out of the pressure and almost capitalizing that. Um, the, she couldn't find any any open players in the box, uh, Fiantico, but they're going to have to be really careful with that SIUE because we were just talking about how fast she is. Yeah, she really is. Junior out of Michigan, second team OVC selection. This is Magnoni. Her pass is intercepted. And a foul on Moorhead State and Fiantico. And that's a, a really good matchup, don't you think? Fiantico with uh, the Akema that has been selected um, OBC Defender of the Year. 
Yeah, that's a matchup you want to see for sure. OVC versus OVC selection. This is Magnoni, the junior, that will handle this set piece. As you see, the fouls continue to climb and rise here in Cookville, Tennessee. Our second semifinal matchup, Tennessee Tech has already punched their ticket to Championship Sunday. It's out of touch. They win SIUE, and now the Cougars will send in a pair of substitutions. It'll be a sophomore, Caitlin Nichols, out of O'Fallon, Missouri, 30th game of her career. And in the shot right there, you're looking at the sophomore, Grace Ferguson, out of Defiance, Missouri, 25th game of her career. A lot of room on this side of the pitch. Let's sit in the box. Sneeders was there, but the flag in the air, second off sides on SIUE. Yeah, she, she wasn't able to get on side after she made that pass, but again, we saw how strong she is with her back to goal. And Moorhead State's defense is having a hard time not letting her turn. Under 15 minutes to go in the first half. When you look at the shots, five shots for SIUE, three shots for Moorhead State. One of those has been on goal for the Eagles. And again, now they're using gifts again to force Snyder's to run all the way back to the keeper, which is obviously gonna make her tired. She she's gonna need to like right. feel how she she's going with the game because that press can be exhausting for a forward. And this time miscommunication, Pilar, and out of touch. Yeah, and that's exactly what Snyder's is, is doing, like forcing Morehead State to make mistakes that they wouldn't make normally. Another substitution, that's a freshman, Macy Begley, who's now in from O'Fallon, Missouri. She did score against Moorhead State in the regular season finale. RL lets one go with the left foot and overshoots everything. Both coaches utilizing their bench late in the first half. Aaron Fites is now in, a sophomore out of Cincinnati, Ohio, a transfer from, from Arkansas Pine Bluff. She's played in every single match this season for the Eagles. Yeah, and Potsik now coming out. She, she had a really good start of the game. Obviously, you want to give your players some rest. She also got fouled a lot. And it would be interesting to see as the game progresses what we just talked about, uh, to see if Snyder's get gets tired because as a, as a forward, um, I played a lot of years doing that kind of pressure and it can be exhausting. How did you view it? Was it annoying to run back and forth and chase or was it necessary? It's necessary because you know at the end of the day it's worth it. You know, you're right. making it easier for your teammates, you're making it predictable for your teammates. And that's why Snyder is such a good player. She she sacrifices for her team, and then she's really good in front of goal. Yes, yeah, Snyder's has been first team OBC twice in her career. She's been second team All Conference selection as well. And look at her; she just forced a mistake again. She's been doing that all game. Constant pressure. That was Nichols that intercepted that pass. This is Nichols again. Nice move by Nichols, has room. Here comes the cross. Trying to earn a corner kick for SIUE. And then is sent out by Sarah Falloon, the junior out of Michigan. And another substitution for SIUE. That's a sophomore, Mary Fetter, out of Blaine, Minnesota, 27th game of her career.
There's a collision and a foul. That is on the sophomore, Caitlin Nichols. And this has been a really physical game so far because of both teams have put a lot of pressure in each other. Seven fouls on SIUE. They're frustrating Moorhead a little because Moorhead hasn't been able to really play from the back that that's what they're good at. Now, the time they did, they got really dangerous, but we see Snitters again pressuring, gaining the ball back, and Moorhead State needs to figure out uh, an answer for that because if, if not, they're not going to be able to get out of their half. That is what they like to do. That's how they feel comfortable when they are able to possess in the other team's half. If you're wondering, Sneeders has played every single second once this season. That was on this field against Tennessee Tech earlier in the month of October, October the 6th. Yeah, and the reason that she probably rests in every game is because we were talking about that pressure. That was a major collision. And another foul on Moorhead State. This will be number six. That time it is on Sarah Falloon. Here's another look at this. And we, we were just talking about how physical this game has been. You know, they both players didn't know where the ball was, both trying to go to the ball, but at the end, Morehead um, State player was too late to eat Falloon there. And this is a really dangerous chance for SAUE. Yes, it is. This is Beckley makes a decision to play it back. Sent in the box from long distance. Well-designed play for SIUE with the shot. That is Deacon of the sophomore, who does have three goals in her career. She does, and um, she has been uh, selected a defender of the year. And not, not only she's a really good defense defender, but it's a player that is also really dangerous attacking. She can score goals, and we're going to see the shot that she took. Missed it by about a foot. It was close. He just saw the sophomore Kaylee Judy check in for the first time from O'Fallon, Missouri. And we see Moorhead there, relentless, playing the ball for the back. They don't wanna, they don't wanna boot it, but that's a foul. You know, we we see SIUE overcommitting sometimes because of how high that press is. When when a player cuts, it's really hard to stop. If you're going at full speed. Just see Sneeders right there trying to figure out how she wants to solve this puzzle. Yeah, and she's been doing a really good job so far. Uh, but now that might be the answer for, for Moorhead is actually allowing those center backs to just dribble the ball up, uh, forcing one midfielder to come to press and then finding that open midfielder. This is Aaron Fight. She just checked in a moment ago. Surveys the land, sends one in the box. The header bounces in the corner and out of touch. And Moorhead State will have an opportunity here. The win for Ledden. Works it inside the 18. Will this be a corner kick? It is. Both uh, Sathron and Sneeders really good um, playing with their back to go, and we saw how they've been forcing a lot of opportunities for their teams by doing so. This is the first corner kick of the night for either team. That is Satrone. Kate Larbs came over momentarily. This is Satrone. Sky's one at the top of the 18-yard box. It's still loose. Here's space, here's a shot, and a save made by Taylor Spiller. That was Aaron Fight that had the really good look for Moorhead State, just their fourth shot tonight. And we see it there. She was aiming for that uh, short post, but really good for Spiller to be there. First save of the night for their second save in the night for Taylor Spiller. 
And another foul. This on SAUE, this will be number nine. And we see what we just talked about, the center backs driving in. That is going to throw another midfielder, and then they're going to be able to find that open midfielder, as we just as we just mentioned a mo moments ago. Yeah, that was all started by Lore. That's out of touch. This will be a goal kick for SAU Reed. So it'll be interesting to see if Moorhead State will continue to do that the rest of the way here. Yeah, I mean, and now we see how Sneeders comes out the, p the field. I mean, I, I don't... I, I, it's not surprising to me for me to see that because she's been doing a tremendous job. But if now the center backs is uh, start dribbling and dribbling, you're just gonna get really tired if you're trying to follow them, and they're gonna need the sneakers, um on the game in the second half. So it's good to give her a breather, and now let's see how her team adapts to that. That was the sophomore Abby Wesselcamper who just checked in out of Cincinnati, Ohio. This is Judy, makes a decision to play it back. Nice pass from Wessel. McNoney spins it over to Kelsey Kehoe, her 28th game. She launches one to the top of the box. Here's a long distance shot again by the Cougars that's off the mark. And we saw Van Hoovy there getting mad at the ref because she felt like she received another foul. Um, and yeah, it's getting really, really physical game. Let's see how the ref handles that too. Semi-finals, two teams that wrapped up the regular season playing each other at Moorhead State. What turned out to be a 3-0 victory for SIUE. Winner will take on Tennessee Tech on Sunday. And we see what happened right now. We had Lore there driving in, which made SIUE's right winger come and pressure her, so then letting was wide open on the side. So again, SIUE now has, to, with Sneeders out, has to figure out a way to pressure that those center backs again. They're gonna go on the dribble the whole time. This is Laura. She did this a moment ago. This time her pass is intercepted. And it knocked away by Macy Begley. Under three minutes remaining in the first half. And Pilar touched on it. Cougars, this is a team, whenever they score first or whenever they have the lead at halftime, they are dangerous. They're six and one when scoring first, and they're five and one when leading at halftime. Yeah, and it's also interesting to see that they're one zero oh, and three when tied at the halftime. So let's see how they do th these last three minutes, and if not, you know, how they ad adapt to that in the second half, knowing that they're in a semifinal. So they're gonna have to find a way to score, even if it's in the second half. Play there by Redmond. Plays it forward, trying to get it to Wessel Kemper, who just checked in. Sent back to Taylor Spiller. You gotta think Moorhead State has to be pleased the way this first half has gone, especially after the first meeting resulted in a 3 0 victory for SAUE. Yeah, and Moorhead State is a team that, as we mentioned, like to possess the ball a lot. Um, so they don't necessarily create as many chances as SAUE, but 
they exhaust their team, the, their rivals, um, by running. They just did that with Sneeders. Although Sneeders was really successful, she obviously had to come out because she had been running a lot. So if they're able to do that, do that, it might be at the end of the game when they score because SIUE is tired. Under 50 seconds. Better launches one in the box and she will earn a throw in for SIUE. And the Cougars capitalize the final 40 seconds. Here's Judy. Has space, uses the left foot. From about 25 yards out, good idea. One of the closest shots of the night we've seen so far from SIUE. Yeah, and they, SIU has been taking shots from from a, from a distance a lot, and they feel really confident in that. And for the first time, we see Morehead not playing out, but obviously that's because they have five seconds left. Our halftime score, SIUE nil, Morehead State nil, first half. We're getting close to the start of the second half. First half to not disappoint. Who is going to take on Tennessee Tech Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock Central? Again, SIUE, they have won the tournament two consecutive seasons. Moorhead State, the three seed, led by first-year head coach Chris Fox. This is their first semifinal appearance since 2015. Underway in the second half from Cookville, Tennessee, in what has been a pitcher perfect Friday to start the semifinals. And now let's see how what is SIUE press. As I see right now, they've changed it. Um, we see how they're gonna pressure with two forwards right now. They're gonna pressure both of Moorhead State center backs, which force Moorhead to play big. That is not something that we're used to seeing. Haro falls down. So do you anticipate to see Moorhead State make a change now with the Cougars yeah, because we, we see Dolt right now pressuring the center back. That's not her player. Now, if Dolt, if Dolt pressures that center back, we, we're going to see Van Hoovy being open here in the right side. So is, is whether or not Moorhead is able to connect with uh, their right and left back in this second, in this second half. Sneeders played 40 minutes in the first half. I took her out final five minutes. Just underway here in half number two. And in our conversation with Moorhead State head coach Chris Fox, he did tell us the last time these two teams played, Moorhead had 66% possession over SIUE, and the Cougars just capitalized, scoring on three different set pieces. And that is something that SIUE is okay with. Um letting Moorhead have a little bit more of the possession because w they're a really dangerous team in the counter attack. They have some, someone like Sneeders on top that is able to hold the ball. Here come the Eagles. Pass is deflected and eventually cleared out by SIUE. What makes the last time these two teams interesting is, of course, Moorhead gave up the three goals, but prior to that, Moorhead had only surrendered three goals their previous seven matches. Yeah, they're, they're a team that, because they have the ball so much, they don't allow their, their opponents to to create a lot of chances. It's like a concept that Fox mentioned is defending with the ball. What that means is because you have the ball, they're not attacking you. So in a, in a way, you're defending with the ball. Eagles trying to do some damage early. This is Redmond. Fights, angles it in the corner. Larves trying to earn a corner kick. She does not. This will be a goal kick for SIUE. Yeah, and it's going to be really interesting to see what both teams have changed looking into the second half. We already saw SIUE kind of adjusting the press a little to make it even more uncomfortable for more head state. And again, SIUE not interested in playing from the back. They know they have the players on top that they can hold the ball and build from there. Oh, 
Sneeders decides to go back. Trying to work it in to Taylor Dolt. And that's Van Hoovey that sends it forward. And that will be the first foul of the second half. They were 15 in the first half. That's the sophomore, Sydney Christopher. Yeah, in, in those chances, you, you're you just trying to be physical, and you'd rather take a foul than a goal, obviously. So Van Hui was going to get really dangerous there. Lore from distance. We've seen her do that a, a handful of times tonight. Yeah, and that was that's a kind of more head solution to, to SIU's press, you know. Sneeders forcing it one side, so the center backs decided, you know what, if you're forcing me to go this side, then I'm going to make you chase me all the way back. So the center of us have decided to just dribble. And, you know, now I said you have to figure out, okay, now who steps up to those center backs when they start dribbling up? Because neither cannot do everything. Just underway in the second half. There's fights. Ball works its way back to Van Hoovey. Gibbs calling for it. She will receive it. Your Sneeders almost was able to get that pass through. Yeah, and it's been so hard for Moorhead center backs to, to deal with, with Sneeders. She's a really ticky player. She can make really good passes even when she doesn't turn like as we as we just saw. Yeah, and we see again Dahl going to pressure the center back. Now, obviously, Van Hoovey is open, but because of the angle that Dahl is going in that pressure, she's going to pressure the center backs, but always first, you know, allow not allowing them to pass it to, lo to Lenin right there. The constant pressure continues for SAUE. This is a team that has scored 18 goals in the regular season. That is tied for the second most in the UVC. Only trailing Tennessee Tech, who scored five goals in their semifinal victory over Lindenwood. Here's Dolt's flag in the air and offsides again. And that was a really good movement by Van Hoovey that was able to recognize that Dolt was coming in to the 18-yard box and she kind of step forward we're gonna look at it how she was able to leave her offside we see van hoovey there she was <laughs> she watching the whole it. time she yeah. moved backwards on purpose to leave dolt offside that's a really small smart defensive play and really risky one too because you do it a second late and then she's not offside right that is the third offsides for siue tonight Van Hoovey, she is a senior, so you're talking about a player that has a lot of experience who can make plays and decisions like that. Just get the sense both of these teams are just trying to fill each other out here early in the second half. Yeah, you're playing a semifinal, so obviously you want to take risks, but not too many because there's a lot of stake. Everyone, both teams want to be there playing Sunday against Tennessee Tech here in this field. This is Haro. Try to turn the corner. Here's Dolt, gets rid of it. A shot, misses wide. Goal kick on the way. 
Moorhead State. And we see Sneeders there. Uh, she's able to, to take shots from with both feet, and that makes it really hard for the defenders, too, because she can take you both sides, and she can shoot with both feet. Now let's see what Dahl decides to do. Now she decides to back up. So then Moorhead State is able to kind of rotate the ball. That is what they've been trying to do the whole game. That could have potentially been a foul in the first half. Letting him play here in the second half. Ranging over, here is Gibbs. Freshman out of Mesa, Arizona. She's played very well tonight and this season in her opportunities. That's headed off of Doltz. This could be dangerous. Here's a shot. Misses wide left off of Christopher. And really, really good defensive play by uh, Fulon. And also uh, really good read by SIUE of where the ball was going. Christopher did a, an amazing job there um, as well as, as Doltz. And that's the risk that Moorhead are taking by possessing from the back, you know. It can be successful, but really risky, like we see right now. Yeah, that's what the pressure can do. Dolt so close to creating an opportunity. That's out of touch, though, in Moorhead State. And we've been talking about that pressure from Dolt. Now it's Sneeders again in that pressure. She's not by herself in this second half. She has support by Dolt, and ultimately she just got a foul from that pressure. Foul goes on Van Hoovey. Really smart body positioning by by Snyder. Uh She knew that she was kind of in a in a good position to get fouled, and and she just put her body in front, knowing that Van Hoovy had no other choice but try to get the ball. Kehoe with a set piece, headed out. Here's Dolt, top of the box, doesn't have room though. Cleared out by Moorhead State. Goalkeeper Spiller is around midfield here. Here's Fight, she came in late in the first half. Needhort gets it through to Christopher. That ricochet is out of touch, throw in SIUE. And we see SIUE, it's, it's, not letting, it's not letting Moorhead State players think. And for the way that Moorhead State plays, they need to think, they need to play one step ahead. They need to know where they're going before receiving the ball. And SIU is, is making that really hard. Gibbs has been very active tonight, especially here in the second half. Yeah, and now we saw how Lore was able to connect with that left vibe. We were talking about the left and right wing were under one pressure in the center backs right now. So then if they're able to connect with the left and right back, then Moorhead State will be able to get out. But it's also risky because we saw Van, Van Hoovy here losing the ball earlier by trying to do so. Winner takes on Tennessee Tech on Sunday. If you're wondering, both of these teams played at Tennessee Tech in the regular season and both dropped those matches to the Golden Eagles who did not suffer a loss in OVC play. Bounced over the head of Dolt. Still fighting for it. Cougar bench, they are looking for a foul call. Dolt was trying to navigate her way around the defender there. And as the minutes go by, th this game is going to be getting more and more physical just because of what we were talking about. No, none of the teams want to lose. It's a really tight, close game. Uh, you don't have, you know, that knowing that you know we have so much time left as the minutes go by you look at the at the clock and see that it's getting 
more risky and now the ref having some words with the SIUE bench because what you mentioned they were kind of asking for a foul there's Derek Burton as well having a conversation with the referee so they did not call a foul a moment ago this is a foul yeah and this is going to be a yellow card exactly who said with that it's on the head coach Derek Burton shake of the head that's just the 10th yellow card this season for SIUE Again, what he's upset about is a moment ago, they thought there was a foul that happened right in front of their bench. There was no foul. And then less than 30 seconds later, a foul goes against SOUE. Yeah, and what they were asking is, uh, they were saying that Moorhead's player had her arms out. That's something that you cannot do. You could you could see the bench doing that gesture. And then they got called on a similar foul. So that's what the, the coach was protesting about. And we can see how... You know, maybe not every other game you wouldn't put protest that foul so, you know, so passionate about it. But in a game like this, that is a semifinal. You're for sure going to do that. SAUE received a double bye as the two seed. It's been 12 days since their last game, which was at Moorhead. There's Needhart, since one out of touch around midfield. This is Ledin getting ready to toss him in, the junior out of Sweden. Division two transfer, what a nice pickup that is, making the jump from Carson Newman in Tennessee. Not too far from where we are here in Cookville. And we saw now how Fox was asking his players to wrap their arms around uh, SIUE's center backs to be able to protect the ball. You know, we see both both coaches complaining, every player complaining. Uh, they're even complaining of where the ball has to be set up. <laughs> that's when that's when you you can tell you're playing a semifinal right there. <laughs> that's right, a lot on the line tonight. SIUE has won the last two tournaments. Moorhead State trying to punch their ticket to Championship Sunday. This is Haro. She had it for a split second and then eventually cleared out by fight. And in the past minutes, Moorhead having a hard time getting the ball out of their half. It's how you build in that pressure. As we see Sneeders again, as soon as she has like half of a chance, she will turn around and shoot it. And that's why, again, we keep saying it, um, more head states, um, center backs have to be really careful with her even turning a little. And now we see how Van Hoovy is open because of that pressure that we were talking about, and she almost got the ball to go past SIU's defense. Moorhead looking for a foul in the box, does not go the way of the Eagles. That's Redmond, sent forward to fight by trying to make her move, working against Deacon, the OVC Defender of the Year. Angle towards the corner, and this results in a goal kick for SIUE. Yeah, and that was a miscommunication between Fiantico and, and Potsig. She was trying to make her uh, the signal that she had to run forward. You see the substitution. Fiantico comes in, and she's going to switch. Um, for pot's sake and come here to this right hand set. And that was the mas match that we were talking about in the first half. The speed versus one of the top defenders in the UVC. Here's a good ball to Fiantico, just checked in and raging over to make the play at Spiller. 
And this is going to allow Morehead to maybe play more direct, knowing that they have a player like Fiantico there that she's going to get to the end of every ball that you send up. Well, Fiantico, she did not start the second half. She was essentially on the bench through the first half of the second half. Another look at this last save by Spiller. A lot of ground to cover, and she did it. Yeah, she made it just in time before Fiantico could get there. Really good job by the defense to protecting that ball so, so Spiller could get it. And now we see they have to be careful with that. Yeah, that was a long way to go to get back to Spiller. Here's Doltz. She's got Sneeders to her right. How does she want to handle this? Look at the footwork. Doltz try to go to her left. It's out of touch. This will be a goal kick. Really good defended by full on super good defender uh, Dol was making direction switches which is really hard for the defender especially when you're in your own box because you don't want to commit a pk as we saw in the previous game so really really good def defended by Morehead stayed there there's grace ferguson she is now back in for siue she played 15 minutes in the first half And Sneeders not ha hasn't been able to receive that ball that much this second half, but as soon as she did, we saw she took a, a great a great chance and had to test Morehead, Morehead goalkeeper Gibbs. What do you think will be the focal points the rest of the way here, midway point of the second half? I think uh, you know for for Morehead it would be not get too emotional, play like they like to play even though the clock is ticking down. And for SIUE, keep keep fighting like they're doing and ultimately connecting with their forwards like they were able to do in the first half. They haven't been able to create that many chances in the second one. Substitution here for each team. In for SIUE, it's the sophomore, Caitlin Nichols. And Nichols was able to create dangerous chances in that first half. Wessel Camper, the player that subbed in for Moorhead. This is Falloon, who stumbled, sent in the box by Fiantico, and a leaping catch made by Spiller. And we see SIUE don't want the ball close to their box, um, not even when they're on offense, which is completely opposite of Moorhead, um, who are trying to just play for the back continuously. That was Dolts pursuing goal kick Moorhead State. Yeah, good, good shield by Lower. She's she's showing why she's one of of the top defenders. She's been able to do damage both defensively and in possession. There you see the both substitutions. Mary Wessel, sophomore from Waterloo, Illinois, is back in. And Sydney Pallet in for Moorhead State for the first time. Sophomore from Pennsylvania, 43rd game of her career. There's Sneeders again pursuing. Pass intercepted by Haro. Haro turns on the Jets. Trying to earn a corner kick, and she does, just the second one in the night. And we're talking about uh, the, the tire, when you get tired, that factor is really important for both uh, pressure, but also for uh, team like Morehead, when you're trying to play out but you're tired, you cannot think as, as good. So you have to simplify everything. Go, that is Sneeders and Haro standing in front of the goalkeeper. Gibbs. Second total corner kick tonight. This is the first for SIUE. This is Christopher towards the back. Pulse the header, it's in! What a sequence, and the Cougars strike first!
That was a great cross in It's Mary Wessel, the sophomore. She just checked in a moment ago, and it's the first goal of her career. That was a great cross and a great header. Yeah, it's like you had a lot of players coming in, kind of made Morehead State couldn't really follow their marks, and, you know, she came in with a lot of power even if Gibbs uh, would have gotten a hand, that was a really hard shot to save. And now let's see how Moorhead responds to this because maybe they're, they cannot um, try to play as comfortable as they've been trying for the past, you know, 30 minutes of, of the half. They have to be able to play more forward. They, they cannot take any chances, any risks now. They have to go up. Shades of what we saw in the regular season between these two teams. Remember, SIUE, they scored on three different set pieces. Their first and only goal of the night on a corner kick. And Fox, uh, Coach Fox, I'm sure he told that to, to their players as, as their obje objective for today. Do not get scored on free kicks. And th that's a hard one because it was a really nice deliver by, by SIUE and a really good header. Here's Ferguson. She just came in. She falls down, throw in SIUE. But we also have to remember why they got that corner, and it was uh, Moorhead State being kind of sloppy, playing the ball out, making a, a mistake, and then giving away that corner. That's why sometimes it's risky to play like that, but it can also be really re regarding too, so... That is Taryn Moore in for the first time, a freshman from Wildwood, Missouri. She has one goal this season, and it came against Moorhead State. And that's when we, we're going to see SIUE playing with the time, you know. Um, as a former player, that's one of the things that I love to do the most, wasting time, getting my opponents, <laughs> getting my opponents frustrated and making them make fouls, making them complain to the ref. At the end of the day, you, you want to get them frustrated so they cannot think about the game. And take time off the clock in your favor in the process. There's another foul, just like you were talking about. That is now 12 on SIUE. And I wouldn't be surprised if, <laughs> if that number builds up pretty quick in these last 20 minutes because they, they want to stop the clock and they don't want to let... Um, more heads stay go forward as much so if that's what it takes that's what they're gonna do in for the first time tonight that's the sophomore madeline mozaleski from springboro ohio she was the ovc defensive player of the week october the fourth So when does time start to become a factor for Moorhead State and just sending multiple players forward? So that's that's a really good question. Um, because of their style of play, I don't think they're going to go crazy just yet. There's still 19 minutes left and ju it's just one goal. You you need one second to get a goal. So you don't want to risk getting scored on with 20 minutes left again. Uh, now, I will say last 10 minutes when you see that SAU is wasting a lot of time and you have really good players in your defense that can head the ball, maybe it's the time to start trying to get more offensive and more crosses in the box. But uh, so far, I think they're going to maintain their style of play, and I think that's the right choice too. That's how they've been successful this season, so I wouldn't take that away just because I got scored on. That was Nichols that just checked back in for SIUE. This will take more time off the clock in favor of the Cougars sent back to Gibbs. There's Nichols, fresh legs, just came back in. That deflects off of her and she can't believe it. Yeah, the ref call a handball. Uh, that's really hard to control because she was just going to press. But now is the time where 
is a huge person really high maybe look at your forward that have the has the ability to hold the ball and i think that's what they're gonna do right now because say is going really tight on you so now you have to look for those forwards to connect with the with the midfielders Morehead State hasn't been able to create a lot of chances in this second half. They've been able to to possess maybe in their half a little, but SIU Express has been really good, and now they, they have to figure out what to do. Only one shot for Morehead State in the second half. Only five total. And now that's what they're going to do. Connect with their forwards make SIUE sink in and then be tricky like they're just being. And even that that ball might be too long. Oh, she gets there. That That's what that's what you're trying to do. There's, you're trying to push SIUE to sit back and create more chances. You have to shoot if you want to score. And again, SIUE taking time. No rush to take that. Right. As the ref, if the ball is in the good spot a couple times, anything that, that you need to do. So back-to-back -back fouls here. And you can see Moorhead wants to go a lot more quicker than SOURE. Yeah, and they, they have to they have to build they play up. They they were almost really successful now. Their number nine has a lot of of space underneath, so you 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 have to try to connect uh with your forwards. Got a player down here for SAUE. This will stop a clock with fifteen fifty six. That is Courtney Vollmer, the junior from Belleville, Illinois. And now if you're Moorhead, there you go. She immediately grabbed her shin. It looks like her knee, and that's a, a really hard one because it's really hard to control how you fall, and that's, yeah, that's, that's her knee, and... Yeah, you just hope she'll be able to be okay here for SAU. Yeah, just the trainer checking on her. Um, you know, again, we're talking that it has been a really physical game. So a lot of fouls, even the ref, I don't think um, they consider that a foul. But Yeah, there, there was no foul call. Just eventually time was stopped just because she could not get up and start moving again but so this is essentially turned into a timeout here for both teams and that is get to see her get up the junior 66 game of her career yeah and it's good to see her being able to to get up and now she she'll get a look by the trainer and if you're more head state you you're doing like what all the players are doing there they want to talk to their coach see try to see what the the strategy is now for the game. Kate Larbs is now in for Moorhead State, junior at Liberty Township, Ohio. She has played throughout the course of this matchup this evening. And we see Sathron going in again. Let's see how, how they adapt. Let's see what indications Fox gave their players because his players because they're gonna need to change something in the next fifteen minutes if they wanna have a chance to, to go to the final against Tennessee Tech. Nice pass to Beckley. Beckley sends one in the corner. Here comes the cross. Catch made by Gibbs. Look at the hustle. Good by hustle. Nichols. We press. Good press. 
and a foul after that sequence on yeah. Nichols and SAUE. And we saw the ref telling her, don't do something like that again. Um, you know, he has to get a handle of this game in the in the next 15 minutes because he can get really physical if not. I don't think it was so much the play. It was just afterwards. They yeah. just kind of bumped into each other. Here's Nichols again. Trying to get to it, trying to navigate around Ledin, and Ledin is able to come up with it. That's sent out of touch. It's going to be a throw in for SAUE. Again, taking time from the clock. Here's Nichols. She's been a magnet to the soccer ball ever since she checked in a moment ago. And this will take more time off the clock in favor of SAUE. That just out of the reach of Nichols. And this will be a goal kick. And we, we saw Fiantico had to do the defensive effort to come all the way down. Um, you want a player like her up in these moments because she's so fast that if you can feed a, a ball, a long ball into her, she can probably get at the end of it and, and get you a cross or a shot. So earlier you alluded to it about the 10 minute mark for Moorhead State to start to send players for there's a foul on SIUE. Yeah, at least try to be more more direct for sure instead of you know playing that much from the back, especially because SIUE is still pressuring high. Uh, they're not backing up; they're pressuring high, forcing you to possess the ball there because they're comfortable with Morehead possessing the ball in their own 18-yard box. So you want to start doing something like this: send your center backs up create opportunities, uh, get crosses. We haven't seen a lot of crosses for Moorhead State. And you you need to get your more offensive players in the ball so they can generate those chances. There you see the shot total tonight. Only one shot in the second half for Moorhead State. And again, precious seconds tick off the clock. Moorhead State needs to work quickly here. Yeah, and, and if I was Moorhead State, I will I will try to send my fullbacks a little bit higher. So then you you that way you force SIUE back too because if you're just possessing in your in your box, SIUE is really comfortable with with going there and keeping you there. But we see a lot of space in the midfielder now. That that space is where um, Morehead State needs to be to be able to then feed those balls to their attacking players. Finally, a late whistle. It took a minute, but a foul was called. Again, another foul on Potsik. She's been she's been really good with the ball. We had with which has for SIUE to foul her constantly during the game. And now let's see if they're able to get that ball past their defensive line, and that's something that Morehead had to struggle to in the free kicks. They have been kind of short, the balls that they have been crossing in. Yeah, and that shot right there, you can see those are the only two players back for Moorhead State. Here's a header in the six-yard box. Eagles trying to do some damage here, trying to earn a corner kick. And this will be a throw-in. 
So again, more players starting to trickle up here for Moorhead State as we're inside 10 minutes. Biontico couldn't quite come up with it, keeps it alive in the box. Biontico cleared out. That was Beckley that got rid of it. Sent back in, here's Biontico. That was almost a handball. This is Redmond from distance. And this is what this is what Morehead State needs to needs to do. Pressure, pressure, recover the ball and take shots, even if it's from distance, if they if they feel confident in their players taking shots from that far. That's only the second shot of of the second half for, for Moorhead, so they need to, to start testing Spiller. Dolt is now back in for SIUE. Remember, Tennessee Tech, by the way, they won by five goals, and they took a lot of their key players out in that second half. Yeah, and and uh, for SIUE we see that it's neither hasn't been playing a lot in the second mm -hmm. half. After after they scored the goal, they decided to to bring other players into the field that maybe are gonna be a little bit more defensive, maybe, because that way she can not only rest but also you can secure a victory here. Redmond sends it to midfield to Citrone. Really good ball. Can Moorhead State capitalize? Contact made just outside the box. No foul. Foe in Moorhead State. Really nice defensive play by, by McNani. That was that was great. She she got the ball. But Moorhead State again feeding those balls to Fiantico that is always gonna get there because as we mentioned, she's a really fast player. Here is Citrone, she's got four goals this season, a team high. Redmond back to midfield, under eight minutes to go. Citrone trying to fight through the traffic, good play there for SIUE, that was Christopher, who's played well tonight. And as we see 10 minutes left, now is when Moorhead is trying to go more up, more direct, not focus so much on possessing from the back, All the way back to Gibbs. Again, Moorhead State running out of time. And they keep trying to feed those balls into Sathron too. She's a, she's a player that is really strong with her back to go. She can hold the ball on top. So if they're able to connect with her, then she will be able to drop it back to their midfield and then they can feed players like uh, Fiantaco and Potsik that can take players on. Aaron Fight is in for Moorhead State. SIUE puts Sneeders back in along with Harrell. Fiantaco throws it in the corner. And again, she'll move up a few feet to throw it in again. This time she will not throw it in. This is Larbs, the junior out of Liberty Township, Ohio. And I see an uh, interesting thing right now. Lore has been switching sides as a center back for Moorhead State. All the way back to Gibbs. Approaching the final five minutes. Here's Sneeders backpedaling, trying to stay with it.
Maduko back in, the junior team captain. So the Cougars putting in a lot of key pieces late here. What a pass that was, getting it through. This is Dolt, Stolt, here's the cross. Trying to find Christopher, her shot is stopped. Sneeders, an opportunity, didn't get as much on that as she would like to. What a great play by Sneeders. We, we saw her trying to do that same pass early. It was, she wasn't able to get it, but now she, she backheeled a pass, uh, knack making the defender to be able to get it to Dolt. Dolts, tons of space to work with, flag in the air, it's another offside. You see the frustration from Dolt. Yeah, and with four minutes left, there's a lot on the line now. Obviously, Morehead State kind of starting to, to get a little more frustrated right now because they haven't been able to, to create those chances that they need to score. But again, they need one second to get a shot in, so they're for sure going to keep fighting until the last second. And we see Spiller there. She wasn't sure if she... Yeah. was going to be able to come out on time, but she ended up doing. Well, she had to because Podzik was bearing down on her. But Spiller, she was backpedaling initially and then changed her mind and came charging in to pick it up. And we see Spiller wasting time, making the ref rush her in. Three minutes left on the clock. Good pass to Haro. She's got Dolt to her left. How she's does she want to handle this? She's going to try to keep it in the corner. That's what I would do. Yeah, there you go. Waste time. Try to keep it for straight. More head. At the end of the game, that's what a lot of forwards try to do. Take the ball to the corner. Try to keep it there. Force them to foul you. Force them uh, to get a free kick. Force them to, to get a throw in or anything that can waste some time for you. This is Fetter, the sophomore out of Minnesota. And we see Fox uh, telling Fotzig right now, go all the way up, go all the way up. There's two minutes left. They need all their offensive players that they can get up. Yeah, only two on the back line for the moment for Moorhead State. We even see Fox with a ball in his hand so he can fit it to his players if the ball goes out of bounds he doesn't want to waste a, a single second and now they're gonna they're gonna have to start going up again that's Christopher Sneeders just burns time off the clock again and Redman seems to be hurt maybe she got a hand on her face but she has to keep going because there's two minutes left That's how you can tell a player wants to win so bad. She seems to be struggling. Maybe she had a hit on the nose. Um, yeah, do you yeah. see her going out of bounds right no, now? She, yeah, she looked right at the referee and <laughs> said, I got I to come off. Yeah, it seems like she's getting something for her nose. It's Avery know. Redmond, the sophomore out of Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, she, she got hit on the, on the nose earlier. She kept playing, but... She was obviously hurt. And now looks like she's gonna come out. Maybe. That was Pala. I thought about coming in. They will stick with Redmond with a minute twenty five remaining. They're playing with a with a one less player, but now she comes back and yeah, there was ten for a split second. That's out of the reach of Spiller. Corner kick for Moorhead State. And Eagles. even Gibbs, we see the goalkeeper Gibbs coming up for the corner. One minute left. Gibbs, the goalkeeper for Moorhead State, getting into the box, trying to head the ball. This is Larbs with a corner kick. Under a minute to go, drama in Cookville. 
Crowded area, we got bodies everywhere. Moorhead State looking for space. That is the goalkeeper. There's nobody in goal right now. Dolt sees that, Haro's got an open goal. It's a foot race. Haro will put one in to make it a 2-0 lead for SIUE. And that's the risk you have to take sometimes. Uh, actually, Gibbs was almost able to get the ball in that corner. They needed a goal so bad. And we're going to see the corner, how Gibbs almost got it. She almost got it there. Yeah, she knew it too. Once she didn't get it, she knew open nets. And Maria Haro is just too good. Third goal of the season, 13th of her career. It's her second goal in her career against Moorhead. And that puts the exclamation point on it for SIUE. So for the third year in a row, SIUE will play for a championship. This time they'll take on Tennessee Tech. And we were talking about pressure. Um, you know, we have a great matchup, a team that is hosting that is the first seed against a team that has won it two times in a row. It's going to be a beautiful game on Sunday to watch. Final score, SIUE 2, Moorhead State nil. Big takeaways from this one, Pilar, or what? It was a, a really good game to watch. Again, SIUE won it 2-0 maybe um, at, the, at the last part of the game, but 